this Grand Theft Auto? What the hell? And welcome to our first look at Train Sim World 4. And uh, this is one of those opportunities where it's like uh, very confusing and very exciting at the same time as we're getting yet another train simulator, which is fantastic. Can't get enough of those games. Simulators are awesome. But this time, it's the fourth time around from Dovetail Games, who, at this point, I think they should have probably named this game by year rather than by number, which makes me feel like we're going to be getting a full new experience. But each of the previous train sim worlds carry over to this game as well, at least a lot of it. Previous routes and trains and content are here in the new game where some things have changed. And, of course, there's new rail lines, too, some of Austrian... Uh, origin and uh, some other locations in the United States such as the Antelope Valley line in California which we're going to take a look at here today and have ourselves a little movie uh, blockbuster film we're going to be a part of a movie we're going to drive by a movie set and see some explosions and such we're going to be a part of a, a movie about trains basically uh, like for example um, I don't know what the hell was that one with um, Denzel Washington I forgot anyway you guys can let me know down below in the comment section but regardless this is not all of everything that's in the game the developers have sent me over a key a little early and this is a part of what's known as the deluxe edition base key but as I looked on Steam it seems like there's a few more different uh, routes that are in the game that aren't necessarily here but of course that also includes some lines from Germany I think I think the Mediterranean line for Italy returns, or maybe that's France. I, I can't qu quite recall, but there's also, of course, the Flying Scotsman that'll be a part of this as well. So it's the Age of Steam returns for the UK instead of it being in Liverpool, I think it was before. Now we get, uh, I think it's on the eastern coast. I, I can't quite remember where everything is. There's a lot of new stuff here, a lot of old stuff, and a lot of remix stuff too, where it may be some of the same train lines, but different uh, types of trains on those lines or at different points through history. So uh, there's a lot of new and a lot of old here and I think that's good that they're allowing us to of course play with all some of the old stuff but I feel like they should have named this game at this point uh, you know Train Sim World 2018 2020 2021 I, I forget exactly when they came out but yeah it's a, a big convoluted mess in my opinion but I'm very excited to always see new train stuff and the good thing is a lot of this stuff is a la carte where you know we always make fun every year when the, whenever there's a new uh, train uh, whenever there's a new steam sale we always go to the Train Sim uh, DLCs and tally everything up. I mean, it's in the thousands and thousands of dollars, which I guess if you're a big train fan, uh, that's nothing if you're building your own layout. But additionally, it's a huge amount of money if you just want to play a game with all the DLC, but it forces you to pick and choose, I suppose, based on your budget. But anyway, let's take a look here at some of the trains. Uh, these are some of the ones for, like, for example, Germany and the UK. And I think a lot of these are a good mix of freight and passenger with the... Uh, Oh, yeah, with the line here for the, uh, I think, uh, California, yeah, having a lot of stuff to do with uh, basically transporting passengers. Although a lot of these scenarios, of course, can be made to be their own uh, timelines or their own, uh, yeah, you could basically create things how you want with different types of scenarios. There's a scenario editor now, and there's also your own timetable, so you can basically make your own route with different weather conditions at different times. There's even a mission where you have to transport a prisoner. They call it Con Fair instead of Con Air. So there's like a late night uh, transportation of a prisoner where he's super high profile and they're trying to miss lead the, uh, I, I guess, gangsters or a criminal organization that's trying to get him back, and they're trying to say, like, oh, yeah, we might transport him via road or by rail or by plane, and so it happens to be by rail, so pretty interesting. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and do the blockbuster scenario now. Witness explosions in action as you drive a train on a movie set. So we're going to be uh, basically driving past that near Glendale. I think that might be our starting location, or at least where we're going to be near. So let's go ahead and get started. Also over on the right side, you can see everything that we're going to be uh, transporting, or at least our train, and also uh, sometimes the cargo too, or the route that it'll be in, and of course, different points for that. It looks like they've added a new um, they've made it a little bit more difficult from what I can recall before there used to be bronze, silver, and gold for how effectively you drive your train, you know, being under the speed limit, doing things safely. Uh, but now it looks like there might be a platinum award or something like that. So yeah, anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Here we are. Today you'll be working on a film set for an upcoming action movie. Take this train up to the set and await instructions from the director. All right, well, let's take a look around. Yeah, it certainly doesn't look very different from Train Sim World 3. I've got to say there was a noticeable difference between 1 and 2, and a little bit between 2 and 3, with 3 having more dynamic weather and uh, other weather effects that made things seem a little bit more realistic. But regardless, it all pretty much looks the same to me, which again is okay, so long as they're going to be including new routes with that and allowing us to have some of the old stuff too. 
So if somebody's getting into Train Sim World for the first time, they'll be well. Everything will be new for you. Uh, but if you're a returning gamer or owner of the previous games, then you'll have a lot of the same stuff carried over to here. But I think there's still a lot of reason to keep some of the old games too, because not everything comes over. Again, it's just very confusing. But anyway, enough of the complaints or the confusion. Let's go ahead and get started by turning on our cab setup. And let's go over to the generator field to on. Then let's probably start with the reverser handle. Yep. And then the brakes to cut in. Then the reverser to forward and then the release brakes. Indeed it is. Boom. All right, apply power to get moving. Cool. So let's go ahead and go on the outside here. Using some of my hotkeys now. Perfect. So there's a lot more city sounds I've noticed this time around. It's not just necessarily cars driving by and animals and crickets and things that you can hear, but a lot more helicopters, airplanes, and police sirens, at least in this part of uh, the California map that they've included for the, Alp uh, the uh, Antelope Valley. And uh, I think there's been a few locations in California before, um, and most of them were either... I'm pretty sure it was just, ah, man, I think it was just this one. I think there were three at this point now. And there's certainly a lot more on the East Coast in the previous versions, too. Like, for example, in New York. Oh, we're already doing 20. We're going way over the speed limit. As a cam, kind of in a hurry. But, of course, we'll earn or uh, be docked points based on how we perform here. So you can see the speedometer down here at about 19 miles an hour. Uh, MPH there in the center. And so... Uh, yeah, first time in a little while playing. But this is a great example, though, of a game that does a very good job of getting anybody who hasn't played in a long time or who's never played or who's an expert to basically get the experience that they want. You can have a lot of on-screen help, everything from a speedometer to um, things showing you the incline to all sorts of different um, information, like in the upper, upper left and upper right corner, showing you uh, where the next stop will be, how distant it is. Or you can just go for the full realism and basically sit in the cab the whole time, which is not, in my opinion, as much fun as kind of looking around at all the environments and stuff as you uh, drive past to be able to see how detailed they are. But it does a pretty good job, at least, of giving you the experience that you want for, you know, somebody who's maybe an adult trying to teach a, a kid or, you know, a nephew or a grandson or granddaughter how trains work and how to drive them. Uh, or maybe somebody younger trying to teach their uh, grandfather or, or somebody older on how to play, so that way they can get the experience of maybe driving a train route that they once did or they once took. And honestly, this is one of my favorite l games to live stream because oftentimes we will get people from our community who are subscribed, which, by the way, you should totally subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell if you watch this far so far and uh, smash that like button because there is a lot to like here for people who always come on in and say that they took this route to work for a few years or that they once uh, worked at one of the train stations or they were a student on some of these routes. Um, and routes, of course, in the previous games have been in Germany, the United Kingdom, Canada, uh, the United States, uh, I think Italy and France, and uh, now going to Austria and a few other locations as well. I think there might be some in Switzerland and uh, maybe a few in uh, different locations around the Alps or um, maybe particular cities, like where it's not necessarily a, na a national line, but like something just in a small town that leads out of the city. Like Vienna or something like that. Not exactly sure. Uh, but if you are curious, there's a great amount of detail on their Steam store page. And they do a pretty good job of... There, there's a lot of stuff to learn in terms of what they got, where it is, and what, how it differs. But, um, yeah, there's, a, there's, a, a, there's just a lot of stuff, honestly. And that's why sometimes it can be hard to understand what the difference between the versions are. And uh, at the beginning of the video, I'll make sure, and again, if you missed it, go back because I'll put up what's different between the special edition, deluxe edition, and whatnot. But uh, anyway, no need to speed. I'm in a hurry here because I'm excited to see these explosions. But let's slow it down a little bit, do the speed limit, and let's take a look at all the buildings here. I think they've done a really good job, again, of making this world look really realistic. In fact, how this city looks is exactly how I want my cities and city skylines to look, too. Oftentimes, I look at this game, Train Sim World, and I look at what mod makers have done for games like, for example, Transport Fever 2, and I always think to myself, damn, what modders can do and what simulations can do, we're almost able to do in City Builders. So it's great to see all these games blending together, truly. There's a lot of great um, kind of like flow between them, 
So if you're a big fan of Train Sim World, you see all the traffic driving around. You see other things like metro lines passing over and under the trains. And uh, sometimes you see airplanes if the train happens to pass or go through an airport. And it, it's just really, really cool. So I'm really happy to see a lot of games almost blending together to where I feel like we're on the cusp of getting a game where we can build our own city and then realistically drive trains, planes, and automobiles around the city where you can go to City Builder View and build a city like this. And then the next thing you know, you can actually drive around. That would be super cool. Wow, beautiful. So in a little bit here, I think we're going to come to a stop at this station. And once we do, we're going to switch to the uh, locomotive behind us and take the train in a different direction, in a different actual, uh, like, a unit. And this game does a pretty damn good job, too, of providing a lot of different uh, units. This one, Metrolink train here. Uh, we'll switch to a different train, and, and they have fully functioning interiors where you can even open the damn windows, which is pretty cool. And uh, a lot of older uh, DLC as well allowed you to go back to eras like the 70s and transport coal in the United States. Some of these eras for Steam uh, may take you back to the 50s, or I think the latest Flying Scotsman line might actually be a heritage route where it's the old trains and the old lines, but uh, it's modern day. And another good little feature is that people who you see board the trains will actually dress in period uh, appropriate clothing. So, you know, nowadays it's people kind of just in uh, jeans or like this guy, you know, like just slacks. He's not really wearing like a hat or anything crazy like that. You know, if this were back in like the 50s or whatnot, he'd have the full, you know, even if he was just going to the hardware store to pick up some nails, he'd be in a suit, a tie, a hat carrying a briefcase, maybe all sorts of crazy stuff. So, all right, let's come to a stop here. And let's throw on that brake. Beautiful. Oh, did you look at that? All right, well, I can stop. That's good. All right, the director is ready uh, to film a test run with the train, switch cabs, and drive the train to the starting position. Are, is this a Michael Bay film, or is this a Schwarzenegger film? Let's see. Go back to off. Oh, there she was. And then we're going to flip this to handle. Oh, that's forward, isn't it? Yep, handle off. And then cut out. And fuel pump. Field generator. Engine off. And cab off. Neutral. And we'll take that handle with us. Cool. All right. We're going to move places now. Another great thing about the game is if you haven't seen it before, you can always walk through the entire interior of a train. And you can even set up the AI to drive trains for you. So if you wanted to kind of sit in a seat and look out the window and look at uh, towns as they pass or whatnot, you can, uh, in pretty much all these train games, not just Train Sim World, but there's also been some from Poland where some of our Polish viewers have said, yep, I've ridden that train route, that's super accurate, it's exactly like that, you know, that kind of thing. And people always just say, like, oh, wait a minute, there's way more graffiti than that, or oh, wait, there's way more trash than that, which, yeah, yeah. They're always trying to bring a bright light to how, you know, trains in, in our world are supposed to look, but, of course, there's always the reality of that one guy times 500, but, you know. Oof, high voltage. All right, looks like we're almost to the locomotive now. Actually, we can get out here. Down here, yeah. Awfully loud. Cool looking train. I've got to say, some of my favorite trains to drive so far in the United States for this game, or just the train sim world in general, have been in New York, um, in and around areas like the, uh, I think you can go all the way from uh, Central Station to, uh, or Terminal to um, some of the areas up north through, uh, I think, Compton and some other uh, locations, which are pretty damn cool to go all the way up to, like, for example, Long Island and do the Long Island Railroad. And I hope to see all the previous content available in this game too, to where it's like if you if you've already if you already own it, this is what I want, not the actual case, but I want all the previous content to be available in this game for everyone. 
And if they've already purchased it before, you got it. And if you haven't purchased it before, then you have the option to do it. Let's sound the horn. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go. We gotta get Japan at this point, though. Honestly, I, I can't believe how many train sim worlds we've gone now, though. Uh, and again, this is more thoughts, but this is really, I think, the future of this game, where we need to have multiplayer. I honestly thought the original game would have it, thought the sequel would have it, and I still think we need to get some sort of a multiplayer, optional multiplayer experience, where people can work together on the same route, or people can uh, direct the trains or whatnot, and uh, I think that would just be absolutely fantastic. And I think at this point, um, it's just a feature that's just been requested for so long that would only benefit the game and benefit the people who play it uh, that I think that should be a thing here as well as now that we've got the scenario creator it would also be cool if there was some sort of a easier route maker or mods but of course this is a company that's in the business of making money and so in order to get licenses for future uh, train routes and whatnot any sort of licensing they have to be able to pay them and they also have to pay their employees so clearly they need to put themselves first in that route so um, it's an interesting thing to consider. But I would love to see JR Rail, Shinkansen. I would love to see uh, South Korean trains, more Canadian routes, uh, and everything. I mean, just train sim world should certainly now at this point feature more than just American uh, and German and British trains, which they do, but they're sprinkled in. Uh, but I hope to see more. I think they've done a good job, but I think they can do even more. And I hope the team continues to grow in order to... Uh, get us a lot more trains because dude frickin trains love them absolutely love them all right well we're gonna have to stop up here let's go ahead and hit the brakes and we're just gonna roll into position here. I think they've done a good job though with all the vehicles that I've seen in all the parking lots and whatnot. Going through industrial areas I think they're better set up than ever before. And typically you would see cars driving around and turning 90 degrees and uh, kind of acting like they were traffic when you were playing like Microsoft Flight Simulator X for example where cars you know were kind of just a far back seat as to the uh, main function of the game to simulate aircraft and and operation uh ground operations at airports and whatnot so but for a game like this where you don't really get to see too far away from the main road but you can definitely see traffic and highways and things like that i think they did a good job all right let's go ahead and stop all right for this scene the train has to keep up with the stunt car keep your speed high and pass each marker at the same time as the car. Get moving once the director gives the go-ahead. Wow, okay. We'll see how we do that. Alright, so we're going to be basically chasing a car. I wonder if we're going to see somebody jump on the back of the train and start running. Is this uh, Mission Impossible, maybe? Everyone to positions, ready, and... And action! Action, let's go. You can definitely hear the wheel slippage. You can definitely hear the, <laughs> definitely hear the wheel slippage there. Alright, I don't know where the stunt car is. Oh, there it is. Okay, so we need to keep... Jesse, we have to cook.
That car better speed the hell up. I'm gonna do like 25 and... This Fast and the Furious? What's going on? Just teleport. I don't know what the hell he's supposed to be doing. I'm just going to do the speed limit. What the hell is he doing? <laughs> Like driving up on the side of the uh of the canal now. I appreciate all the street art. Oh wow. They brought in a helicopter. Cool. Final marker. All right, cut. Perfect run. The director is pleased. Head back and start another run. Okay. Alright, well that was kind of cool. I, I guess they filmed a car doing 50 miles an hour across <laughs> a canal from a train with a helicopter following. Alright. I think you could have probably gotten a drone nowadays for a quarter of the price, but it wouldn't have been as exciting. At least for us. Unless that was part of the scene for the car to be chased by the helicopter. Certainly pretty cool to see all the car traffic. Set break mode to test. Shut off all of our equipment there and take the brake handle with us. Set reverser to neutral. I can't move it. Uh, that's strange. There we go. Should have told me to move the master controller to idle. 
But it makes sense that we can't move it that way. Kind of cool that there's a failsafe, but for players who don't know that, like I had forgotten that, some people will be struggling with that for a while. Hey guys, what's up? What? Alright. Wonder if the helicopter's out there. Alright, time to go the other way. Don't see the button for this one. Uh, inside? No? Could be automatic. Alright, cab set up. Fuel pump on. Generator field on. Engine on. And let's go. Door's still open. I wonder if we'll get a penalty for that. I did not see a button to close that, but it's got to be there somewhere. And I wonder if there's an actual control to close that from in here. Oh wow, we got ATS uh, Acknowledge, Sanders. Actually, we could probably do it this way, right? Usually there's a way to press tab to where you can lock and unlock and control doors from the tab menu, including contacting the signaler, but it doesn't work in this case. That's alright, we'll keep it open. That'll uh, be free air conditioning. It'll be perfect that way, especially when we're doing 50 miles an hour. Now, I'm wondering if in this case we're just going to drive all the way back and then... Uh, Trying to remember the control for... Nope. There's a way to see our future objectives and whatnot. Oh, wow. There's a hotkey for the wipers. Nice. Oh, yeah. The sander, too. Cool. able to drive at six. Barely doing any sort of speed now. But the interiors are quite detailed, and I really appreciate all the small details, everything from like a first aid kit to just like a maybe like an area for a lunchbox, or uh, in some cases in the uh, steam locomotives, they have a tea kettle around, lanterns, small seats, for example.
certainly crawling now. If we take a look at the map too, I wonder if there's actually a way to see... Yeah, the whole map that we have for this region. Uh, we've only been playing in these areas between Glendale and Los Angeles Station. A Union Station there. But there's still uh, Burbank downtown. Burbank Airport North. Sun Valley. Uh, we've got... Uh, is it Sil Salmar? Uh, San Fernando. New Hall all the way. Wow. Actually, there's a lot There's a lot of locations here. I thought it would end up there, but we go all the way through the Vista Canyon. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that long route there. That is gorgeous. All the way up to Lancaster. Wow. Okay. I actually, that's going to be a beautiful uh, drive right there. I got to see if there's a train route that actually goes either the full route or maybe just through the valley there, which is gorgeous. I mean, I could I could tell by how the tracks are laid out that that's going to be some beautiful mountainous terrain, maybe a river up there. Don't I'm not familiar with the area, nor am I familiar with the train route. But when I see something like that, I got a lot of high hopes, even if I'm playing like ATS and Euro Truck, for some gorgeous um, scenery. All right, we're basically doing what we had from the very beginning when we left the uh, that station where we just were, crossing this bridge again. And I think that might be the end of our whole mission, but we're pretty close to it. I feel like something's off to slow us down a little bit here. Let's turn on the cab light. We can see pretty well, obviously, it's daytime. But maybe that door is throttling us somehow. Let's see. Oh, there we go. It's like I had to reach outside. I don't actually see a button anywhere here. There's an emergency button there. Uh, now magically we're picking up speed. Whoa, is there like a safety feature for that? That's interesting. We were really just crawling before. And now that the door has closed, we're picking up speed. I, I wonder if that's actually IRL and programmed in the game as well. Although you'd think there would just be alarms blaring for the uh, engineer about the door being open while even proceeding. E even throwing the reverser into forward with the door open. But also, you'd think there'd be some sort of master control from here to be able to see what's going on. A camera, maybe, to see if it's stuck open or if somebody's blocking it. And then a way to remedy that from the, uh, from the engineer's cab without having to go down there, especially if it's several cars back, if it's just stuck and just needs an override or something. But a beautiful location. I really want to haul some cargo here and just kind of take it slow. This game does a really good job of... Now, and also, because this game is currently unreleased with this version, I've kind of uh, turned graphics down to about high and medium in some cases just to get performance up where... Uh, well, my PC's getting a little older now. I'm going to have to get a new one this year. But I, I feel like for most players... Not everybody needs to play on the highest graphics. It certainly is, uh, you know, most people want to play on as high as they can. But I feel like high or medium are good enough to just be able to play and enjoy. And ultra, um, you know, that's going to take a beefy machine. But I also believe that this is available for Xbox, or should be. At least the Train Sim World franchise has been traditionally. And so a lot of things are optimized for consoles, too, where, um, you know, high and high and medium kind of blend together to be the best that those consoles can do and then ultra of course if you want to get into the crazy 4k realism where it almost feels like you're in the cab uh, that's an option as well and you know that, that's another appeal to these games too is being able to see the city like that but for me the real question is at this point to start a conversation down below in the comments section on uh, what's next for this game series? It certainly is successful. That's why they've made four of them. 
Uh, but what other train games are we going to get in the future? Of course, we have other open world games like uh, there's a train, is it train drive? There, there's some that almost operate like Euro Truck and ATS where you're uh, driving your own train, but then eventually it's a little bit like Derail Valley too, where you t take your own jobs and eventually you can buy better and bigger trains. But Derail Valley is an absolute phenomenal example of a very good train sim done right very realistic and also of course we have train sim world and then we've got a few other train uh, ones like i mentioned train driver and then uh, there's a, a polish one that allows you to drive polish trains and also you know drive in poland and do uh polish like um train conducting or whatnot being able to be in control of the towers and i think there's still a lot more out there and a lot more coming uh and hopefully we get like another transport fever dlc but, um, you know, some games are tycoon builders, some games are simulators, some almost feel like both, but we need some more train games out there. But I certainly want some more options for multiplayer cooperation of, you know, shunting and loading up trains and getting them to where they need to go. Uh, Railroad, Railroads Online, another great example of uh, a train simulator done right as well with being able to build the train lines and stuff. It's really cool. All right, turn master controller to off. Uh, oh, it's stuck in P1 there. There we go. Brake handle to release. And then oh, off. Oh, that's the wipers just behind there. <laughs> there we go. All right, cut out. Cut it out. Cut it out. No need. And the cab as well. You want me to do this again? You gotta be kidding me. Didn't Michael Bay get enough the first time? Given what we learned from the door last time, I'm gonna shut all of these because I don't know if it's going to trigger if the any cab door is open. Don't need that one. Back to passenger. Release. And let's go. Alright, now we're rolling. So a little misleading. There's a um, marker to stop at location here at about um, 800 yards away in closing. Uh, but there's a marker up here where we need to stop and the game doesn't necessarily indicate that where we need to either contact signaler or just stop and wait so proceed as signals indicate so right about here if we if we cross this we're gonna get in trouble so we need to basically stop I guess until it changes so here we have yellow here we have stop So we can't stop there until uh, until it turns green. So even though it says to uh, stop at that location, and even if we ask the uh, signaler, we still have to wait for it to turn from red to green. So again, a, a little beginner's trap for people who are not used to that. Even I uh, fell for that again. I, I think there needs to be more clear communication on that. If you're in a scenario where it's telling you to do everything step by step, if you're going to 
hold hands, you have to do it the whole time because once you let go, then it's like, oh, okay, I'm free to go to the next objective, but there is a little in between here. So we'll wait to see if it turns green or not. I have had scenarios before in the previous versions of Train Sim World where they just won't turn uh, green and it's almost like you have to restart. Although this game will let you either uh, restart from uh, checkpoint or you could save your current progress or you can like restart the whole scenario together or just go back to the main menu. So hopefully I want to see those damn explosions. Otherwise, you know, like we have to redo a whole scenario just to like get this part to refresh. So we'll wait for a little bit. There could be a train coming and indeed there is. So we'll just have to wait until he comes by. So, uh, but yeah, now's a great opportunity, though, to talk about everything we've seen so far, at least for California. It looks good. I've got to say, though, I feel like the, uh, the biggest section of this game is always going to be and always has been Germany. There seems to be, for every one American or one British train line or route that we get, or even new train on pre-existing routes, we seem to get like two for the Germans, two new trains for the Germans, two new routes for the Germans, or two new, I don't know, like extensions to a route or something like that. Uh, this time we'll be getting Austria, which is kind of uh, different, kind of similar, but it's like, it, it feels like the same part of the world. Um, just like how when uh, Canada get, get uh, got added and gets things from time to time, it feels like, you know, it's Canada, but it also feels like America, North America. So things are rather similar there, which feels good because, again, the Americans don't get too much, but the British also deserve to get a little bit more as well. And they do seem to get some, well, some of the coolest stuff as well with steam trains and whatnot. So um, I feel like they're all somewhat balanced. The Germans seem to get the most amount of stuff, though it seems always the same. The British seem to get the most unique things in different areas, and the Americans get like the most, um, you know, East Coast, West Coast, where it's like very much the same and very, very different at the same time. All right, we see the signal about ready to change. Warning us that we might be able to proceed shortly. Standing by. Come on. We're trying to film a movie here, pal. All right, he's past that next section. We should be able to go. All right, we should be able to go, and I wanted to make sure we gave enough time for him to get to the station. We're not going to get a green, but, like, we're green, you know what I mean? Oh, not that one. Not seeing any power here. We'll cycle the brakes. Let's go back to neutral. Let's try full service. Neutral, or release, then neutral. Rattle is set to idle. There we go. Sometimes it takes a little bit to reset that after you go into emergency. Some of them have a combo like go to neutral, go to idle, cycle the brake. Might be different for each locomotive in real life, but sometimes it can be different in the game. Okay, so and another indicator of what we need to be doing is in the upper right corner where it shows us that, uh, you know, 1.25 miles 
per section or whatnot. It shows speed limits and distance, so that's another thing to keep an eye on. Ah, uh, train sim world. Never change. I gotta say, though, every time that there's a new Train Sim World DLC after I've finished playing it, I certainly want to play a lot more, but then run out of time. And by the end of me actually playing it, I get a lot more skilled each time, too, where if I spend three hours on a new train route, let's say the uh, new Flying Scotsman routes, um, by the time I'm done with that, I'm, I'm damn near an expert of understanding at least the train or the route and then kind of don't come back to it again. So it, it very much is like riding a bike where you never forget, but of course... There's a lot of things that you're a little rusty on and need to do it again. And it, it's a great game, again, going back to what I said about learning to drive with a, a grandparent or a child or something like that. You know, like the, the whole teaching aspect of it is certainly ever clear and ever present. Very nice. All right, the crew are... In position, ready to film. Keep up with the stunt car. Pass the markers as before. The director will begin the countdown any moment. All right. Here we go. All right, let's make Michael Bay proud. You know what a good movie was? The Rock. You remember that? I think Michael Bay directed that. I'm pretty. I'm like 99% sure. Sean Connery, Nicolas Cage, and inspired some of the missions from Call of Duty. Action. All right, let's go. Yeah, damn good movie. Oh, even Ed Harris was in that as well. Don't forget Ed Harris. Same dude who played the sniper in uh, Enemy at the Gates. And also, uh, I think his name was Kristoff from uh, The Truman Show. Yeah, Ed Harris, pretty damn good actor. Oh, and also he was the, um, I don't know what you call him, the, f the flight chief from Apollo 13. Work the problem, people. <laughs> that was a damn good quote. Don't panic, don't whine, don't, no emotions, just work, there is a problem, work the problem. Let's find a solution. Love that. That's the way to get things done. Let's find the root of the problem and work it out. In this case, it's me. <laughs> the problem on this train route. Hey, now, come on, I'm having a good time. And that's what matters most with these games. Learn something and feel good. This is almost like speed. Yo, know, big, big shout out to Keanu Reeves if you're watching this, bro. I miss you. We're not friends or anything, and I know he doesn't know me, but Keanu Reeves is like the type of guy who would definitely uh, buy you a drink, and then you'd feel obligated to buy him many. He's just a good dude. Is this Grand Theft Auto? What the hell? Holy crap. They just tried to bomb that car with like a... Was that like a U2? Looked like a B1? What the hell was that? Wow, I did not expect that. Sweet. I guess the first one was just the test. That, that was worth it. Like a Grand Theft Auto mission for sure. Which means that we're in an unstoppable train. Yeah, there's no way that would have ever been approved in real life. No way. Maybe the helicopter thing, but aircraft, no way. Boy, he bombed him again.
There was a little bit more explosion on the bridge. Had we been a little faster, we may have may have actually caught up on that, but I was th so thrown out by the first explosion. So I think the best case scenario would be pass over that bridge while the car is passing under it while the explosions are going off on the sides. That's the way to do it. But that's what happens when you get the platinum. We'll probably, surprisingly enough, get gold on this one. I feel like the previous games were rather easy to get gold, so I feel like this will rather be easy to get gold with our current performance than practice will make perfect. Well, at least they made this one interesting. Alright, let's crawl into position. Oh, not emergency. That's right. Nice cut. Absolutely fantastic. Cool. Well, that was a really good scenario. I think I want to actually play that one again to get the perfect explosion on that bridge. Now that I know where it'll be. And there you go. So yeah, you can see all of our costs to speeding, impacts, coupling. Ooh, this is cool. So they do... There's a rate... I don't think this was here before. Uh, based on how hard you couple to other cars, junction changes if you leave the vehicle on safely, not using wipers, cab setup, etc. Here it was just mostly speeding, um, which is easy to do in those very small sections. What the hell? I got the bronze... Uh, the, uh, the platinum for this? <laughs> really? No way. Th this should still be much more difficult. This is not silver. This, this is actually the... No way. Hold on. Let's go back to the menu. There's no way. Oh, I like the load screens, too, showing you a few of the new trains. Session invalid. Oh, it's because the game's not out yet, so thus it can't record what I did. Uh, let's see again. Oh, cool. Here's all the trains and such, too. And they're, uh, Now, remember, this is not the full game itself because there's different versions of the game. And this one's also just kind of like a, a preview version that they have available for now. But the Deluxe, the Special Edition, and, like, the Ultimate Edition? I, there's a few different, but uh, those are some of the trains. Let's go back to the route and see that one for scenarios. No way, we did it. Over 5,000 points. Wow, okay. So despite me having uh, quite a few issues there, I guess it's not too bad. But hey, you set your own personal goals in this game, and that's really important. But uh, yeah, so it looks like five missions for this one. A lot of the other scenarios have somewhere around like uh, maybe five or more. With some of these, for example, the uh, steam locomotive here. Or uh, the... Um... Actually, this is based on the lines, so... If we go to, um, yeah, this scenario it features a few different trains. So we have everything from the uh, Flying Scotsman to the, uh, actually three or four of those. We also have the uh, 801s here too and the 66. All in different areas around Doncaster and Peterborough. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but that's just the British line. Then, of course, we got some German ones too. And the uh, very interesting, uh, the Vorl Vorlberg, which I think is called the... Uh, uh, there's a name to this train, the Vortex or something like that. There's a few of them. I don't think I have access to this one now. Oh, there it is, the Vectron, my mistake. The Vec the Railpool Vectron, which is pretty sweet. I think that might be one of the most recent trains that are here. Uh, this one's the 2010 to present uh, Siemens. But we got Bombardier from 2017, 2000. Maybe some of these that are more modern. All these are rated difficulty 5, too, which is interesting. All these trains, first thing on the list is difficulty 5. I feel like that could be remodeled a little bit. You can also see where I've leveled up with a few trains. Uh, like the Metrolink. Oh, there you go. There's your uh, Austrian trains, too. Cool. We'll have to do that sometime soon. Folks, I want to know from you what you think about the game, what you like, what you think could be different, and uh, if you'll uh, so kindly join me for some of our future live streams where we can look a lot more in-depth at this. This is simply just a first look at the game and just one scenario, uh, but we have yet to see a lot more things coming soon, many of which I can't pronounce. Like, well, we have the Vectron, and then we have more things for, like, the East Coast Main Line and more things for the Flying Scotsman and the Novel Worker Dresden like line and stuff like that so uh, and a lot of stuff from the past that will return upon launch of this one too in fact when i tried to launch it myself uh i'd forgotten to put in a special code to launch four and it actually launched three so these games are definitely tied to each other um and are like a it, it's like pl like 
6.5. Like every time we get a new one of these, it feels like, you know, Train Sim World 2 was more like Train Sim World 1.5. So I feel like we're somewhere around like 3 or f like 3.5 now, but certainly, I don't know. There's, there's a ways to go, I think, for uh, this game. And I feel like they should put out more free content, especially since so many people have bought so many things in the past. So hopefully they do that. But anyway, I'll see you all next time. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of the game. And I hope to see you all soon for more live streams on uh, this train route, many other steam trains, and more. Thank you very much for watching. Look at that steam train in the upper right corner. That is pretty. The Crimson 8F. Mmm. Sexy.